Hello guys, Smart Polly here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine Basics. In this video, we are going to be going over UMG, Unreal Engine Motion Graphics, which is the UI editor for Unreal Engine. And in this video, we will create a simple main menu widget and just go over some of the basic tools, best practices, and things to know about creating UI in Unreal Engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create a new third person project here and name this UMG basics and basically if you've never used UMG before or if you've never made any UI it's really simple they have these classes if you right click in your content browser and go to user interface they have these widget classes so if we go ahead and create one we're gonna name this main widget open that up uh, this is basically the uh, widget editor where you're gonna be doing most of your work with the user interface so I'm going to explain a few things here. We have a compile save uh, buttons here at the top. Then on the left here we have the palette. So this holds all of the different types of tools that we can use such as buttons, progress bars, images, all that stuff to create our UI. We have the hierarchy right here. So this is just pretty much like the layers. Then we have animations. So we can create new animations and we have the timeline here to animate it. So we can add some really nice animation to our user interface. At the top right here, we have a screen size fill screen, which I'll get to in a second. In this little viewport, you can pan around by right clicking and zoom in with your scroll button. On the right, we have the details. So when we have a button selected, it'll show all the details for that. And so this is really just the designer side. So if we go to the graph here, uh, this is the blueprint aspect of the user interface. So this can allow us to add functionality to our buttons and to our progress bars and all that stuff. So if we go back in the designer tab here, I'm gonna set the screen size to uh, televisions, 1080p. And you're gonna see here it says 1080p right here on the bottom left. So we can compile save that. I'm gonna create a basic main menu. So we can add a vertical box. And then you can see here we can uh, scale this vertical box up, move it around uh, by clicking on it. And so I'm just going to scale it here to the center of the screen. And in that vertical box, I'm going to add a button. And we can add a text onto that button. You can either drag and drop it here or drag and drop it onto the button right here. So you're going to see here that in our canvas panel, we have the vertical box. In that vertical box, we have the button. On that button, we have text. And so as you click on these things, you're going to see the details update. So for the details here, I want to point out a couple things. So the text block, uh, this is the name of the actual text block. Uh, the actual text inside of the text block is set right here. So we can set this to play game. And the text block right here, uh, you can change this to play game text block. You don't really have to go and name all these, especially for the text block, um, but just know that the text block name is different from the actual uh, content, text content. So we have the button right here. We can change the button name here to play button. Okay. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just copy that button and paste it two, uh, three more times. And so we can click on the next play button one, change this to, uh, changes to host game button. And on the text here, we can change this to, change the content to host game. Then the next button, we can change this button name to options button. And the text, we can change the content to options. The last button here, we can change this to quit game button and for the text here we can change this to quit game so it's a very basic uh, main menu buttons uh, we can adjust the padding of each button so how far it's spread apart if we click on the play button right here you're going to see padding we have a few different options uh, we have the size we can have it to fill or auto Horizontal alignment, so this uh, we can have it aligned to center, aligned to the side, the right. 
whatever you really want. Um, I'm just going to have it horizontally align fill. And the padding, like I was saying, so we can give a padding of 10 on the left, 10 on the right. For the top and bottom, we can give it a padding of like, say, 20 and 20. So you're going to see it kind of breaks up, puts space in between the other buttons. So if I actually take down the top, uh, back down to 10, the bottom down to 10, uh, we can copy this padding too and go to the host game button and paste that padding. So we can do that for all the rest of our buttons here to evenly space them out. Now you can also change the color, style, and opacity of a button. If you click here on the style, you're going to see here we have a normal, pressed, and hovered. So if we go into the normal, we can either set that button as an image, or we can change the tint and color to say red. So normally it's going to be red. When it's hovered over, we can make this say yellow. And then when it's pressed, we can make it blue. And you can also copy that style and paste it for each one, just like so. Okay, and so uh, one more thing I want to do is take our widget box, our vertical box here, and we're going to go up to the top here, and you're going to see this anchor. And you're going to see like this little kind of star shape over here. That's basically what this is. It's an anchor. So the anchor allows us to take our widget and anchor it to our screen. Uh, we can take our anchor, and either we can drag our anchor and center it here and move it around. Uh, but what I like to do is go over to the anchors right here and click on the center one. So it's automatically going to align our anchor to the center because that's where our UI is. We can actually take this and move it a little bit more in the center. And then you want to take the edges right here and drag it to match the size of your vertical box. So this is just telling Unreal Engine where you want to anchor that UI to. And this will automatically improve the scaling. So like say if you were playing in a windowed mode or if you're playing on a other resolution than 1080p, it's going to make sure to anchor your UI to the middle so that's not off the screen for some reason. So just make sure that you always anchor your UI. All right, so let's go ahead and draw this UI onto our character. So how do we do that? So if we just go ahead and create a new level, a empty level, we're gonna go ahead and add a cube right here, R to scale it up. Put a player start right here. And in the world settings, uh, we're going to create just a new game mode main menu GM and for the default pawn class uh, we'll just go ahead and right click on our content browser blueprint class character main menu character okay so open that up and in the event graph we're going to off of the event begin play create widget the class of the widget will be our main menu widget and the only player we're just going to get player controller and then off the return value, we can, we can add to report. I want to do one more thing by dragging off the player controller and set show mouse cursor. Uh, make sure you check that to true. Compile and save that. And also change uh, the main menu character here in the game mode to main menu character there. So if we save our map, we can just name this main menu map. If we hit play, you're going to see our main menu here UI is drawn so if we hover over you can see the yellow uh, style is updating and when we click it turns blue right now it's not doing anything because we haven't set up the buttons yet and also you can also play right here in a new editor window uh, to give you a better uh, feel of the UI okay so back in our main widget we can also add an image here to our canvas panel click on that image you can set the size to 1920 by 1080 and you can put the Z order to zero click on the vertical box and set the Z order one the Z order is think about it as like the send to the front or send to the back or like the layer order so for our image you can set this really to whatever you want um, you can actually import it a background image if you want I'm just gonna import this uh, background image right here and just assign it here to the image for our background compile save that okay and you can also make sure that the anchors set to the full screen that way uh, it doesn't scale or anything and it doesn't look odd 
So let's go ahead and add some functionality to our buttons here. So off the play game, we can scroll down here to the events. We have an on clicked. Basically when we click the play button, we can open level, third person, example, map. So when we click play, it's gonna open up the third person example map. Okay, host game, you could add um, a create a session or host a game. Options, uh, draw another widget that has different buttons that control like the screen resolution. And also quit game button, if we scroll down, add on click, we can quit game. So as for the options, we're gonna create a new vertical box. We can scale this up. In the vertical box, we can add a scroll box and set that to fill. Okay, and in here we can add a horizontal box. And in that horizontal box, we're gonna add a button. And the text on that button. Then we can add a slider and set that slider to fill. On our text block, we can name the content to quality. And then we can name the vertical box here. Uh, we want to change the vertical box name to options menu. Set that to is a variable. Uh, very important that you do this. And then go back to our vertical box here. We're actually gonna rename this to main menu vertical box and set that to a variable. So when we press the options, we're gonna add a on clicked. We're going to get the main menu vertical box set visibility to hidden. And then we're going to set the visibility of the options menu to visible. Okay, and actually in the designer, we need to go back and add another button into our options menu. And that's just going to be a back button. So we can add text to it too. So we'll just name this text to back. And for the button here, we'll add an on click and copy over this. And we're just going to set the main menu to visible and set this to hidden. Compile, save that. And before we hit play, uh, one more thing we wanna do is make sure the options menu is set to collapse for now. That way it's not visible. So if we hit play, and you see we have our little menu. Uh, if I click options, you're gonna see quality. We have a little slider here. Doesn't do anything at the moment. We can hit back. We have our little main menu. We can hit play game. It's gonna open up the third person game. And then if we go back here, we can click quick game. It's gonna exit out the game. So just a very basic user interface. There's just many different types of tools that you can use. Uh, some of the most popular ones you're gonna be using, obviously text and button. Uh, let me point out a few things. Uh, you're going to see here single child and image, uh, single child clickable. So this is really important because if you're going to try and add a button and maybe add an image to that button, you can't add more than a, a single child to the ones that say you can only handle a single child. So that's important if you're like trying to add a bunch of things to like this one button. Uh, you can only have one thing added to it. So in the hierarchy, uh, that's basically how it works. Um, so to go around that, you're going to add uh, basically overlays. They can have multiple children. You can use scroll boxes, size boxes. Um, you can also create a widget, create a new widget, and draw that widget within a widget. So if I create a new widget here, and I'm going to set the screen size, or to the fill size to desired on screen. I'm gonna delete the canvas panel and add a size box. We can define in the size box a width and height override. So we can say 300 pixels by 200 pixels. Or maybe we'll make this 500 pixels by 200. And in that we can add actually a border. So that border can have in the appearance, the brush color. We can change this to a black with the opacity of 0.5, so it's a little bit transparent. Uh, one thing I want to mention and point out is you do not want to change the color content and opacity right here for the brush color. You always want to change your appearance right here. 
Uh, this is going to change the content within the border. So you don't want to ever do that, really. I'm going to add here a overlay. And the overlay is going to allow us to put multiple children within that. So, for example, we'd add a button. We're going to add multiple buttons to that overlay. Now, what I'd recommend doing instead of it just adding a button would be vertical box. Within that vertical box, we can add a horizontal box. We'll probably add two horizontal boxes there. For the vertical box, you can set that to fill. Horizontal box. We can add a button here. We can add a text here. And at the very bottom here, we can add a editable text. And we can center the editable uh, horizontal box here at the bottom, to the very bottom. And we set the horizontal box here to fill. Okay, so just a uh, really simple, ugly little chat window here. The point I was trying to make is that you can add, you can basically stack widgets. So if you go here back to our main widget, we can go to user created and drag in our new widget blueprint, the one we just created. And you're going to see it right here on the bottom left. So the importance of this, and again, you want to anchor it to the bottom left. The importance of doing this and uh, nesting widgets within widgets is the fact that it's going to be a lot more cleaner in your hierarchy. Because as you can see here, there's a bunch of different buttons here. I mean, you can go ahead and collapse these, but still, uh, if you have like inventory, player window, it's going to be a lot just in your left window. So if you create separate widgets for those um, and just drag and drop the user created, it's going to make things a lot cleaner and overall for a better workflow. That's pretty much it for this tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned a few things about user interface. I suggest uh, just playing around with all the different tools that you can create and try to make just some fun UI just to get a hang of it. And that's pretty much it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.